healing, calming butterfly sunrise. Now, I really want to assure you of a few things. You might notice I have a few subscribers here. Uh, on the mic is my husband, John. Hello. So they're his subscribers too. And the reason we do is we've taught a lot of beginners to paint. And I've learned a couple things uh, being on the platform about that, which is that, yeah, you can paint and you probably can paint this. And the conditions for that is that I do a really good job on my end teaching it. And that's what I do here. I explain everything I'm doing, explain every technique. I demonstrate it. We have robotic cameras that zoom in so that you can see what's happening. You'll see the color mixes on top of that. We provide an amazing number of resources. If you check your description down below, I feel like a flight attendant. If you check your description down below, this is the beginning of the video, enjoy. Check down below. If you click it and you open it, if you're able to do that on your device, you're gonna see a lot of links, a lot of resources, a lot of information. When you're really new here, the first most important information is the link to the website because on the website is your grid reference and your picture reference and your traceable, all of which are free to download. I'm gonna demonstrate a new type of grid, which is even more beginner friendly. And I believe you could use in other photos if you're trying to do your own original uh, uh, painting, but you're not really confident in drawing yet. If you're like, no man, I can't do that. The traceable's there, ready to print out. We have the materials also down there. Um, I list all the colors that I use for the year um, just because right now I'm just trying to help everyone get familiar with uh, what we're gonna be using in 2021, but I will be editing it down. So when I go to the palette, I'll tell you exactly the colors for this lesson and then edit the video. Also, about seven days from now, a free mini book will come out and that is a step-by-step -step written out guide of this. A few days from now, there'll be a step-by-step -step infographic you can pin on Pinterest. That is how prepared I am. Ooh. That is how committed. We're, we're prepared. committed. That's it. Yeah, we do this live. So you can ask me questions while it's going. So if you want to paint along and then you're like, ah, this thing happened, you can ask me about it. Put those questions all in caps and uh, we won't think you're yelling at us. I promise we'll know that you are uh, just asking a question and you might get your question asked live on the show. If you don't, just come by after, throw it down in the comments. Now, if you could do me a favor, New here, hit the subscribe button or the like button or the comment button or share button. Just some little love, you know, to appreciate the fact that I work 724 to make sure that you can learn how to paint. It's true. It's, it's really true. I also want to welcome all our emoji members. You guys have two new emojis to play with, a kitty corn and today's painting update. So I think that's pretty exciting as well. Mm -hmm. Is everybody ready to get into it? Super. All right. So this here is a stretched 16 by 20 canvas. You don't have to do it on this size. You could, if this was a big and over intimidating size, just do it on an eight by 10 because they're the same aspect ratio. Mm -hmm. Little trick there. Now on my stretch canvas, I have the words kindness, compassion, healing, and peace. That is our wish and intention to go out. We often take wishes from our community, but right now we're just doing the big global ones because we think like, just globally, we need those things. Mm -hmm. I have over here some acrylic paint and of course my cup of coffee for sippy sippy. Cup of coffee. This is quinacridone magenta. This is dioxazine purple. This is ultramarine blue. This is where, if you're really new, you might have trouble. So I will call it out as I get the colors so you know which one I'm getting. Ultramarine blue is on the left. Thalo blue is on the right. Cad red medium. Cad yellow medium. Burnt sienna. Mars black. Titanium white. I have water. Water. <laughs> water. <laughs> I also have a ruler so that I can make some lines later. It's going to really help me get an exact rendering of my butterfly in an easy peasy way. And I have some chalk so I can do some drawing that's not permanent into my canvas. Are you guys ready to get started? Well, I say Lisa and May May are. They just joined Emoji Club. Thank you very much. Welcome to Emoji Club. Let's blow bubbles for Emoji Club. Let's blow bubbles for Emoji Club. I don't know we, if you can see them, but they're going to go by. I can see them our, and they delight me. The, we got the bubble machine unclogged. And Zoom went down, but the bubble machine is up. It feels like one thing goes down and another thing goes up, but two things can't be working at the same time. Do they feel like that a little bit? I've taken to beatboxing so we don't have to pay licensing fees. Is, is, is that what you were doing? It's, I can do that. I feel I like one, you beatbox like SpongeBob beatbox. That's right, man. I feel like that is how you beatbox, like SpongeBob style. It is the best day ever. Right. Okay, don't unsub. It's fine. <laughs> I want SpongeBob on you. So now on this, 
And I'm going to talk about this a little bit. I have my handy dandy reference Whoa, here. Oh, Sabrina, thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Sabrina. Just, I'm just going to say thank you back. Thank you. Amazing, thank you. No, oh, I really appreciate that. So here we have our wonderful reference. I really think this is very important. You can't really paint what you don't see, especially when you're new and you don't have a large visual library vocabulary going on. So the big thing we're going to try to go here, and this is a kind of a tricky bit where we go from a blue to kind of a coral to a light kind of coral yellow back up to an aqua. Ooh. Ooh, these are tricky, tricky transitions. This is, yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's not as, it's not as challenging as you might think. The, um, the sunset really is in, the glowing part of the sunset really is in the half lower part of the canvas. I know that. And by the way, I provide this for you too because I have this measured out simplified grid where it's halves instead of every two inches. Because these are simple objects. It's not really that hard to render out. So you guys ready to try to... Is, are, now, are we going? Are we approaching step one? I think you're going to have to put up the step one. Step one uh, bumper, and, and then I time stamp it. Well, we time stamp it, and then it matches the step by step mini book. I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to dedicate step one to Sabrina's birthday because she shared her birthday with us and here and thank you very much because that Happy was very birthday. generous. She was ger very generous in Happy giving birthday. us a gift on These her birthday. These are your birthday. birthday bubbles. So thank they you. They are your Texas snowflakes. Except Even though where I live has real snowflakes now. And so it is less amusing to talk about snowflakes. <laughs> what do you mean? You don't shovel the snowflakes. I don't. I watch you, though. I <laughs> watch you labor in the wave. snowflakes, and I feel terrible for you. <laughs> so I'm going to show you a little trick here. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a mister. Now, this is a micro mister. This particular one is called stylistsprayers.com mister mister. Mm. I think that's what it is. Mr. Mister. Have, it's just a micro mister. It's, it's not particularly special in any really radical way and I'm going to get not inexpensive uh, brush initially and I'm going to kind of take my little watercolor words and put them into the canvas so that they don't bleed through and make it seem like our butterfly has a cartoon going on. Now down here we've got a little bit of blue it's yeah. going to go to a coral and then it's going to go to soft coral and then it's going to go back to a blue. One of the things that you can do to make that easier is pre-mix a bit before you get going. So Remix. coral is just orange with white in it. So if I mix the orange out now, and you're going to get it, it's more red than yellow when you're starting with coral, right? The white, more white and red you get into, the more peach it goes. That's kind of how you get there. Pink is a primary red, generally like a magenta and white, or a primary red and white, like a quin red. This is a cad red, so it's always going to take you into more of a coral space. That's its job. That's mm -hmm. why it exists. So I've got a little bit of that out. Up here, right, in this blue area, that's just going to be a lot of white and a, and a little bit of phthalo blue. And then down here is the blue again. Let's start with... What are you doing? I'm trying to decide which moppy mop I want to do, which brush or brush. I'm going to come here. Okay. Get the so this is these are available at Craft Stars, and they're not particularly pricey oh, and they do work and I'm going to demo it so you don't feel like you've got to go buy a bunch of really special uh, brushes. I'm taking my ultramarine blue and my phthalo blue and I'm mixing them together. I'll get a little bit of my white into that. I have very little water on my brush but I do have a stay wet palette and I'm going to come here and just sort of brush this up right across here well that was doable right that makes a big like uh, maybe get a little bit it. more kind of when you know the fish eye look to the sky well i think this one isn't going to be fish eye as much as this sunsets are rarely uh even oh yeah that's true i'm going to pull some more white down here now when i get water I get a very little amount of water. Notice I'm not dunking my brush in the water. Mm. And that is because I'll get a little more turquoise here. Uh, acrylic paint thins with water. I'm going to come to the top. We're going to brush it back and forth. Now, it doesn't look like you've mixed that very much. You've let it be a little looser on the brush. It's a little looser, and it's going to mix on the canvas. It's more important that I kind of get this out. Now, as I'm going to come down... 
I'm going to go ahead and add some more white into this blue. I am moving fast, and that can be nerve-wracking when you're new. Why is that? Well, because I need to get to blend here before it dries. Like, I don't even have time to monologue like a villain right now. You're just... Because blending works when the paint is wet. So, so I if can't... I want it to be wet, I got to go. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow, and I'm going to mix, and this is going to create a transitional. We're going to save our questions until you're done with your yeah. dance. We're going to go back and forth. See how we're going? Yeah. The trick, the reason that worked is the paint I was blending into was still wet. Now, mm -hmm. I'm going to rinse out, and I will probably even change brushes. Why would I change brushes? I will change brushes because I want a clean bit of color now. So I'm going to just take brush. a, yeah, clean brush. That makes a clean color. And it's going to make a clean color. So you don't have to worry about the old brush having color on it real quick. Right. Because <laughs> you're going to get there. So you might want to have a couple of big brushes if you're doing this blending. You're going to want to have some big brushes. But understand, they sell these brushes in packs of 3 inch, 2 inch, and 1 inch for a good economy price. They have them at Walmart. Purdy. It makes a great one in the paint section of your home. There you go. Repair. Purdy does. All right. There we go. I'm going to rinse out. All right, now, so you just got a blended paint. Nope, I got stuff. a little more to do here. Oh. John, John's always like, we're ready to go. We got to get into a little bit of coral. Oh, no, I was just trying to help nav narrate because you were busy blending fast. All right, let's go here, and we're going to brush in while it's all still wet very lightly. I'm not pressing hard. I'm going back and forth, back and forth. Look at that, just, just soft, 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 soft. Soft, 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 soft. Yeah, this look. I use house paint uh, brushes sometimes. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't let him tell you otherwise. The brush I mean, he wouldn't tell know. you otherwise, but, huh? The brush doesn't know. The brush doesn't know, and we're not, we're not reporting it. It'll be like, hey, this is not a house. I don't take it all the way to the end, and I'm going to brush a little bit lightly as I come over here. And then... I'm going to look at it real quick. I'm going to rinse out. And if I had any area that I needed to blend, I would do that now, though. I think I did a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. I'm not actually ready to put the sun in the bright pop of coral out yet, and that's because um, we're going to glaze over this space. So this, this is what's challenging for you when you're new to painting because the transition from complementary colors, from the blue to the orange, can be really hard and then also understanding that acrylic paint blends when it's wet don't know how to blend that's okay i have a whole video about it and it's short <laughs> and i actually have a lot of videos about it and it's short and it really is doable you can do acrylic just like oils it just takes a little getting used to and if you just put your mind to it i promise you can pull this technique off remember you can always practice a technique on scratch paper or canvas i don't know why you switch there i had i bumped a keyboard i'm gonna sip my coffee so i'm gonna sit my coffee Sometimes it's and now accident. I'm going to dry my canvas. Sometimes it's just me making an accident. You're accidentally I'm switching? I'm accidentally touching buttons. He just needs to sit on top of my head because he knows it makes me crazy. It does buttons. make me crazy. Oh, I saw the side of your head. It was your ear. <sighs> Real so. easy when you're new to painting to hold your breath and get tense and start going, I can't do this. Especially when you see somebody like me doing a fast technique and you think, I cannot do that fast technique. You can't. You can't. You ever want to paint a room and you just didn't want to spend a lot of time doing it? Same. You've done it. You've done, you've done the whole thing. You've gone back and forth, back on. Paint a room, paint a room, paint a room, paint a room, paint a room. You've done it. Let me ask you. Hmm. After you're done drying, will we, will, will we be moving on to step two? It'll be step two. Okay. So I'll put the graphic up while you're drying. That okay. way you have a good time stamp. All right. Perfect. And I got to take a picture of that. And we got to take a picture. So let me dry it. Take a picture. You do that. And then we'll step to it. That'll be good. I'll tell them about Let's stuff. hope it doesn't take out the power of the house. Well, you know, we get one thing at a time. It's not on. Other button. No, no, lower, it's a switch. Hmm? Just roll the other switch. One of the, it was on. Okay, so it was working. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to put on, I'm going to hope it works, do, 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 step two of Healing Beautiful Sunrise. 
And thank you guys for joining us. It is really, really wonderful to have you with us. Um, it's uh, very nice to be able to spend a Saturday afternoon with our closest friends here painting and enjoying this time together. So thank you for joining us. And uh, if you're drying your surface at home, don't forget to not use heat because when you heat, when you use heat, it uh, it affects your paint by making you forget to not subscribe. So hit the subscribe button. No, but seriously, uh, heat's not great for acrylic paint. Um, it's just, generally speaking, not good. So. The hook brings you back. It does. <laughs> All right, Don's going to take a picture, and I'm going to talk to you about concept here. So, again, the effectiveness is... Effectiveness of this technique is in that you're painting your new color into the previous color on the canvas while both are still wet. That's when acrylic blends. You're going back and forth. You don't want to go up and down to blend. That'll take everything away. You want to go back and forth to blend. You want to have a light pressure. And what you're trying to avoid is where the blue stops in an abrupt line to the orange. If you get that, just come back over it again with a little bit of blue close to the orange. You don't have to do the whole segment again and then blend that area. Very good. Right? So, and again, I've got a whole blending video, which hopefully I'm sure the mods have dropped, which really talks about how to do transitional blending, which seems really complicated, but really is just about confidence and a little bit of hustle. And you probably have hustle in you. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath. <sighs> You're capable of anything. Yeah. All right. So here we are. That's Our so butterfly pretty. will be here. We've got to give it a sunset, something beautiful for it to enjoy. I'm going to get just a big square, well, maybe a round brush. Let's go round. round. Let's get a round brush, any round brush. This is a number 12 ruby satin round. Other brushes will work here too. I'm just telling you which one it is so that you know what I'm using. I will, however, consider changing water because whenever I'm working with yellow, it's nice to have clean, clean water. And I will put out some more white. And I will do that as well. I'll put it here. It'll fit there. That'll be fine. Right? Now I'm going to want to get a little bit of my orange into my magenta. Get my white into it. You can see it goes just a little bit more into that peachy coral. Mm -hmm. Get a little water into it. How much water did you get there? Very little. Very little. And I'm going to take this here. I'm going to brush back. Notice I'm okay with these, these, these little brush strokes kind of going off in the distance. That's fine. I don't mind that. Not yeah. at all. They're, very, they're a little streaky. They're a little bit streaky because that's, that's what it'll be. And then you can come back with just a damp brush. This is just damp. And go over the canvas, softening these edges before it's dry. One doesn't always think one can do this, but you can. Hmm. Right? Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get some yellow. Just yellow. I'll bring it over to this white. Let's go down into this a bit. And we made a little downward swirl, didn't we? Hmm. And then as you come up, you definitely want to have a little more white into it. It lightens up up here All right now i've got that kind of sun focal i do a lot of these sunsets in fact i paint every day little paintings especially this time of year because i'm getting ready for a big art challenge that we do every april and i gotta have a lot of stuff done for that so i have been doing sunset 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 everybody in emoji club if you just join go you get a sneak peek at potential acrylic april also, patrons do as well in group on Facebook. So there we've got that wonderful kind of beginning of that glow, right? Mm -hmm. Now you're going to want to come in here and grab some white. And I'm going to just add a little bit. Just tapping up and down, kind of creating a little bit of a slightly out of focus white area. You may not want to, and I can just tell you from years of experience, do the white where it's kind of smushed and weird and out. 
looks amazing in photographs, not always as good in paintings. Get a little bit of this here. Just making sure there's a nice little glow around. If you have any boo-boos, you just come back. Yeah, you got it. You can handle it. You are good. Fun stuff. Mm. That's a it's a it's a little bit larger brush. Yeah, you could use a square brush for this as well. Um, I like to use larger brushes for this reason. If you use a small brush on a big canvas, you're gonna spend a long time painting an area of the canvas. As a teacher, you guys don't mind being here for a reasonable painting session, but you may not want to be here for me using a teeny tiny brush right. and watching me do that for a while. That doesn't mean that you have to do exactly that, right? Let's come here and I've just added a little bit of that peach. Right here. A little brush. It's just fun to do. There we go. I like it. Good, good, good. A little bit. Last one. And then I'm going to dry it. And we're going to go on to. The step three. Step three. I could see that. Can you see that? I could totally see it. This is I good can see looking. that. Yeah. It's, it's, to... it's, it's a good introduction into a uh, complicated three color sunset scheme. Easy sunsets are red, orange, yellow. <laughs> those are the easiest. Uh, next after that is like a purple to a pink. And that's because those are color harmonies. So you don't have any, con uh, if you haven't ever heard of this, there's a thing called complementary colors. And they do say nice things about each other, but they also make the color gray. <coughs> they go, I'd like to get together, but we're going to make a very neutral gray. Mm. And so that can be really challenging when you're new, especially if you don't know yeah. that that can happen. So that's why this uh, ended up being like in the two hoots. That was one of the reasons that we put it at two hoot was because there's three colors in the sunset and there's some compliments here. So got a little bit to do. Let's dry it. All right. So while we're doing, while she's drying that canvas, I'll say it's a good time to take a breath in, you know, breathe in, take that moment to relax, breathe out. Just take that moment. What's that? I see a thing that happened here. The thing you... the, there's a thing Ooh. called color shift. It was darkening and I lost a lot of my white as I was drying, right? As the paint was drying and the colors intermixed. So I'm going to come back now that I kind of pre-dried with just a tap of a little bit of bright white. That's Not a lot, but you just need it. And I just wanted to point it out in case it happened to you too. All right. <laughs> that color shifting. Of course, the moment we take to breathe... We have some color shift, and we missed it. Man. Fun times. How can it be? We All took right. a moment for a breath, just as a, you know, in there. Mm hmm And then we forgot about the... Did you remember the bumper? I, I missed the, the color shift. You missed the color missed shift? missed the color shift because we were taking a breath. Well, that's because the paint was wet and wet, and as it dried, some of those oh. pigments intermixed, right? So that's the thing that happens. And how come it didn't turn green when you added the yellow over the blue? Was it because the, the paint was already dry and it didn't blend? When we came back with the yellow, yeah, that's why. The reason we dried between those two layers is to prevent a bright streak of green in your painting at home. <laughs> so one of the things that happens is that um, when I'm painting a painting, I can like break a bunch of rules and skip a bunch of steps and really come through and have like a great sky. But I also know that you at home don't have the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of hours of experience that I have in painting. And so you might not have as easy of a time doing that. So sometimes I'll break a step up or dry a space or take a particular action really for the benefit of you at home, knowing what you will go through. Because again, as I mentioned, I've taught a few people to paint and they've given me feedback. And just like uh, you guys learn from me, I've learned from you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to take a very large T-square. Very large T-square. Very large T-square. And I'm going to very lightly with chalk, right? You could use kids' chalk. I'm going to use the fancy art material, create a color white chalk pencil. 
right? But you could just use kids chalk, like what you use on chalkboard. You just want white. It's just to help you make a bit of a measurement. We're going to come across here, and you'll notice this is a 20-inch canvas. So this style of grid works, uh, the principle of it will work on any photograph that you have, right? Mm -hmm. If you're trying to freehand your drawing and you don't draw. I divide it in half, and then I divide the half in half again. It's that simple. So if it's a 20-inch canvas, it is uh, 10 inches across, and I guess it's a 51 uh, centimeter canvas, so that would be like uh, 25, 25 centimeters, maybe 25 and a half. It's got, I don't know. They're not a one-to-one. -one. <laughs> I wish they were. That would be so easy, right? <laughs> so look at my ruler to find your centimeter equivalent, because I don't know, but you guys do, right? So those are those lines. Now I'll put this aside. I don't need these to be dark because I want to be able to erase them very easily with a damp brush. This is just a little bit of information that I need. So very light. Let me go across here and make a little mark. It's a light mark. Otherwise, I got to repaint my sky. There's another light mark. And that's the other reason I don't want this to be hot or wet because then the marks can become permanent. So you don't want to have this, this surface be hard. You don't want it to be wet. And if you're really new to this technique, it's actually even better to use kids chalk for chalkboard because it's much harder to create grid lines that you can't get rid of. Then I'm going to come across here. And this is 16. So 16 divided in half is 8. Oh, look at us. I'm teaching math. Not really. <laughs> so the halfway point between 8 and 16 is 12. And the halfway point between 1 and 8 is 4. So then I can come across it. Ooh, that one didn't show at all. You'd be more helpful to me there. I feel like I will, there it is. I will have to get to it in a minute. I'll have to flip the canvas over to get to it and see it. So again, I'm just going to go like this. Mm -hmm. This is going to help me know how big to go with my uh, dandelion. And it's going to help me know where to place my butterfly. I could just use a traceable. That would be okay. Nobody would go, you can't use one. That's just wrong. You know how we teach art and not spelling? Mm -hmm. That is one dandelion. Did I spell dandelion? Dandelion. Oh, He's no. Dressed well. Oh, shoot. I do that a lot. I do do that a lot, don't I? Mm -hmm. That's okay. You okay. emotionally capitalize as well. I emotionally capitalize as well. Things that I do, that I do, that I do, that I do, that I do. All right, so I have very light grid lines, but they match my reference. And that's going to let me do a couple of things. It's going to let me kind of give myself a guide to be like, where does my dandelion go? It's going to come over here uh, between the 10 and 15, right? So I'm going to come up. I'm just being light with my my space and we know that like the little ends of them kind of come through here and this will help me make sure that when I'm repainting that wonderful fluff uh, I don't get lost in it because it's really easy to get lost in the fluff. I realized I needed a, a pad of paper or something Do so you? I could demonstrate I in a minute in a, in a minute I just in a minute like when when you go take the picture you can do that now let's uh, draw the butterfly just real quick okay draw the, butterfly. the butterfly's body is right here at the center of the canvas. His little thorax goes up a bit. And he has a little head, and he likes his little head. Right? And he's got some wings, and his wings will come down right about here. And I'll curve those out. And then the back of his wing kind of comes in right here. And we go scoopity, scoopity, scoop. And it's going to come back here. So if everything that we do on his wing will be right in there. And if you're placing him using the traceable, this is a similar placement that you would use, right? It's a similar, similar placement. Don't know how to use a traceable? That's okay. I got a video on that. I got a video on all of it. If you are new to painting and you need some, just like, what is going on here, guidance? I got that. I'm going to bring the wing up to here. Now, the top wings of butterflies are generally bigger than the bottom wing. That's just a general thing. If you're painting a, a fantasy butterfly, that would be true. If you're painting a realistic butterfly, that's still sort of true. 
realistic, I mean in, in color markings and stuff. We're doing a blue butterfly here, so, you know. We got this nice foreshortened wing coming out here. Pull this out, and it's going to come in perspective to join down here. In. And then his second wing actually will pull forward about like this. So that's going to be hard to photograph. Mm, I'll do what I can. <laughs> okay. But here's one of the things that I do. Often at this stage in the mini book or the step-by-step, -step, that's where I put a lined traceable over the image. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I can do that for you as well. And so we may be okay there. But take a picture just in case. That way I can see. Step four. Step four. Step four. And, and There's no talk more about than step four in my pad. Fabriano 1264. Oh, okay. I will. I have, because Sennelier loves me and Fabriano loves me, I have the new... 1264 Fabriano pads. These are the funnest of pads if you have anyone who likes to do sketching in your life. Um, um, I might be better. Let's feel the page. Oh, I'm going to go Bristol. That's a really good, what I just showed you is good if you have somebody in your life that draws. Get yourself some 1264. This is Bristol though. All right. Oh, this is Bristol. Bristol is 100 pounds. Paper is rated in weights. So what you have in your copier is like 20 pounds. Bristol's like 100. And what I do in watercolor is 140 pounds. But when I'm serious about my watercolor, it's 300 pounds. Oh, heavy paper. Heavy okay, paper. that's fine. I'm a little excited about paper. Right? <laughs> Let's talk about lines, okay. right? Lines. Sometimes it's really hard when you're new to painting to figure out how to get the lines. How to handle pressure, how to get curves, how to get those beautiful expressive moments that attract us to painting so much but are a little hard to handle when we're new. So let's talk about it. Sometimes when I show you guys something on a very blank piece of paper, right? I have pulled this out of its out of its space, right? Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot of different uh, brushes to get lines. One of the the best brushes to get lines is an angle brush or a round. Let's use both. So I'm going to get my brush wet, a little wetter than I have in the past, right? And I'm going to load it up with black paint. Notice that I'm pulling the brush out and flipping it over. That's super important. All right. Whenever I want to do a line, let's say I want to do a nice line up here that's going to be one of the dandelions. If a line is thicker at the beginning and thinner at the end, the trick is... Let me get over your shoulder there. Oh, yeah. As I come up, I lighten my pressure. The beginning of the stroke has the most weight from my body through my hand onto the canvas. Then as I finish, I'm going to flick and release. And could, notice that I get a nice tapered line right there. Yeah, could you move the paper to the left side of the surface? And then, yeah, that'll make it a little easier for me to see over there. All right, let's do that again then. Because what's the goal? The goal is to make it easy to see. So let's come again. I'm going to do this right oh, here. Oh, perfect. Now let's go right here. And John's going to really get in on the brush so you can see. I am. When I want it to be thick, I start with a heavier pressure. And when I want it to be light, I release. The short bristles begin the stroke. The long bristles finish it. Perfect. That's super doable. That's totally it. Let's look at it with a round real fast. Okay. Just so we know. We're going to get a round wet. We're going to come in here and we load the same way. We load like this because it puts a lot of paint in the brush and lets my brush stroke go further. We add water because it thins the paint and improves the fluidity. Okay, I'm going to come here. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Now, I didn't have enough water. Ooh. It dry brushed out. It dry brushed out. Even though this is paper and it's extra thirsty, that can happen on the canvas. So what you do is you go back over the stroke very carefully, and then you go up. Oh. Right. When we're wanting to do these little flicking strokes, right, it's going to be a matter of starting again a little bit heavier and lightening it up. See, I've got a little curve to my stroke. Mm -hmm. We're going to curve like this, but when we come around the back side, look, we're going to curve like that, kind of implying a little, a little perspective. 
And some of the dandelion fluff is going to wander like this. And it's okay if you'll notice that even our brush gets a little bit uh, fluffy and feathered out because it will overall take in kind of a space, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're really, really struggling, and I know I have some. Disappearing Sherpa. With fine lines, there is something called fluid paint. Now, this is the fine art version of it. I have it in Payne's Gray. You can get it in Mars Black by Holbein. I have a one by Golden, also very good. But craft paint, kind of like this too. You know the little bottles of craft paint at the store? Yeah. I like this too. And you'll notice that it's going to do, I'm going to do this real quick just so you can see what it Good does. On the cover. Right. I don't have to go get water. Oh. Right. Come on. All right. Ooh, oh. That was some stuff. So that's why I bother sometimes to get this type of paint. And yes, yes. I mean, you get some Deco Americana. There you are. So that's some different ways to sort of handle what's going on. Does that help a little bit? Oh, yeah. All right. Let's switch this. Back to the surface. Back okay. to the surface. All right. That's not an Aerosmith song, is it? No. Back to the surface again. <laughs> now, one of the things that can help me put in my dandelion fluff, and I'm going to put my dandelion fluff on because the butterfly needs to be landed on it, and we've got some water drops to do. Okay. So first we'll do our fluff, and then we'll do our water drops, and then we'll do our butterfly. Ooh. And then we'll be like, we were wonderful, and we have spent a wonderful Saturday, and aren't we brilliant? So This has been pretty pretty enjoyable, down, you know, like kind of mellow and, you know. Kind of fun and mellow yeah, and everything. I'm, I'm, I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to sit there and say, there's definitely a little fluff that happens right here, right? And then there's a little bit of a fluff. It happens right here. They kind of really lay, interlay into each other a bit. So you've got to sort of plan for that. Now, right here, there's another bit of a little fluff that comes right about here. And then there's one that's sort of behind everybody that comes to about here. Oh, yeah. So what we're doing is we're just finding, like, all the little fluffs, and we'll start painting some fluffs, and then we'll keep adding fluffs. This one is far away, and it's okay if our lines are a little fuzzy and out of focus and light. Because it's a little fuzzy and out of focus and light. And I might even get a little blue into my mix here. I do want it to be dark, right? I do absolutely want it to be dark, so I'm just taking the black over there. But if it has a little blue in it, that will help it also feel, um, you know, a little bit part of the background. All right, here we go. We're doing the little fluffs away, mm -hmm. these little faraway fluffs, and we're doing that first before we put in the stone. Now, if you drew the outline of your butterfly in a little dark, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. When you get to it, it'll be all right? It'll be all right. Mostly in art, let's just go with it's going to be all right. Let's bring some of these out here. Sometimes it's nice to bring them out. We're doing very light strokes. They're very light. Look at that. They're barely showing. Ooh. Let's come here. We want to make this fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. Channel your inner Groot. Soft and fluffy. I am Groot. I think I meant a different Groot. Groot. Was it, who was the guy from Despicable Me? I thought it was Groot. Oh. Similar, oh. same, I don't know. I don't know. I thought you said Groot. I think I did. I often do that. I get into this like painting state and then I'm like, oh no. Let's just take a minute. You got time. I mean, I know all of Groot's lines. I haven't memorized. All right, there we go. That's a nice little bit of fluff. You've got some fluff. He likes you so much. You've got some fluff. I keep Groot's <clears throat> autobiography. Next Gonna go to from me. here to here. Sometimes it helps if you give yourself an exit strategy. 
Oh, what do you mean? I make a little goal, like a little mark where I'm trying to hit. And as I go down, I press down harder and harder and harder. So in this one, look, I started out lighter. But as I come down, I press down harder and harder. Check that out. We have the first of the dandelion fluffs. Fluff. We fluffed. This is the fluff for you. You can do it too. You can. Now these little seed pod thingies that float away in the wind. Mm -hmm. These are now, little seed pod thingies that float away in the wind. I have to say, this is like a prehistoric dandelion. <laughs> it's a bit of a minute. Actually, just what it is is it's just a macro photograph of a thing in a a little moment. All right, so we've got another little fluff about here. And he's the furthest back fluff. We're painting our furthest away fluff first. Hmm. I'm going to come here and just very lightly do a similar thing. These are light lines. All right. Light pressure, I'm not pressing hard. Uh, if you're getting thick lines, you are uh, have too much paint on the brush. The brush is maybe not uh, fluid enough. There's a video I have on where to start with acrylic painting, and it talks about common mistakes that beginners make, and it really goes over the loads on how you get these so you get a better result. Just focuses on that. It's fun to be playful with those little lines, a little curve in them. Give them a little zh, right? A little bit of zh. Mm -hmm. Now, this particular one stem actually goes to here, over here, from here to there. So let's get some paint there. We're going to start out thin and then press harder as we go. I'll need to go a couple of times to get a good line that I like that looks like a stem. I can come back from the other side. Wonderful. Look at us. How are we doing? How are you doing? Really nice. If you're holding your breath or you're hunching, take a minute to pay attention to your body. Make sure you're taking care of your body while you're painting. So breathe in. Breathe out. Now, it does help a little bit sometimes. You know how when you're taking a picture on a camera and you want to steady itself, you ever held your breath? Oh, yeah. So the natural inclination of your body trying to hold its breath while you're trying to create a steady line is an organic, natural thing. The point is, is you have to be present in that painting state that you are holding your breath so that you replenish with oxygen mm. when you're done with that part. And if you have a very unsteady hand, sometimes it can help to make a bridge with your other hand. That's where you take your other hand and kind of rest here to give the hand steadiness. Or you can get something called a mall stick, which is a special tool just for that. Just for that. Now, we got you a bridge, but it's very big. Yeah. It's well, that's and also for a table. Yeah, it's a table bridge. It's a table bridge, so it's a completely different thing. I'm gonna come here. This is a very far back little fluff. I'm gonna do light lines. Notice the pressure's light. I'm just, I don't mind if the lines do what's called breaking. Sometimes you can make a, make a line seem out of focus a bit by breaking the line, letting the line be not continued. That's okay. Or loving your necklace today. Oh, thank you. It's Betsy Johnson. Betsy Johnson. It was a gift. Very love it. Deep in the fluff. Deep in the fluff. Let's be deep in the fluff. The world can fall away and we can just be deep into the dandelion fluff where no problems exist. 
Oh, it's coming in beautifully, isn't it? <gasps> da, 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 da. I always like to look and be like, what's the next one? What's the next one? Where does what's that fluff stem one? go? So the next dandelion oh. fluff is right here. Where are you going to put the other fluff stem, though? Oh, I got to put his little stem in, don't I? Thank you. John always catches me on that because I get to be do like. Do I? Yeah, you do. Sometimes. He's pretty good. All right. So we're going to start here. Mm. I'm there. If I need to get just a smidge of water, I will. Pressing harder as I go. Look at that. So pressure in your brush stroke. Very important. You don't want pressure in your life. Pressure in your brush stroke. You want to be able to control that, right? Yeah. Maybe you want pressure in your life. I don't know. I don't know what you need. I don't mean to speak to your experience. It's like, you know. I'm going to put another little one here. I think I need another little one here. It's a queen song. Under pressure. That's what we are, man. Under pressure. The lines come from our dot. If you have a line that doesn't come from your dot, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. And we're going to bring a little line back here as well. And it's going to come down to maybe here. Just bringing it in. Pressing harder as you come down. There you go. Let me just add the fluffs. You got to fluff as you need to fluff. As you need the fluff, as the world fluffs, perhaps, perhaps it is as the world fluffs. As you fluff. As we all fluff. We all fluff here. I just had a Pennywise moment in my head. Mm. Emoji up, shared emoji, if you too, whatever you hear, we all fluff here, went Pennywise the Clown. Nah, see, I didn't. Yeah, you don't ever watch anything now, so you don't count. John does not watch, like, he's not going to watch a scary clown movie. <laughs> yeah. He would look at me like I was a crazy person. He'd be like, what? No. Is there anything about, like, I don't know, the history of aqueducts? That'd be fun. <laughs> I get a little bit of my thalo blue sometimes and mix in there to just kind of blue up. You know, one never can know too much about aqueducts. Apparently not. Printing, 3D printing, a lot of space. A lot of space watching for John. Let us go. Now we're doing big paintings. They're beautiful. And they can go over our sofa. Hmm. And we're just making a little stroke. There you go. Now, if, you're, if your uh, background is dry and you make a little boo-boo, I'll show you over here. All right, so say I'm going here and I go like this and I'm like, oh, no, I didn't want that. It's the worst. I can come back with a damp, clean brush. So, erase a little bit. As long as you don't let it dry, you should be able to get it back to where it was. That's just an important thing to know. It's just it just matters that you know you've got to know it. You do. You gotta know it. So this one has a little stem kind of coming back. It joins everybody else, kind of comes down to it has rejoined the mothership. It has. I'm going to step back a little bit because I like to take it all in. It's a good idea every once in a while to step back from your art. Make sure everything is where you want it to be. 
pretty cool. Now I've got another one up here. I'm going to do. It's a fun one. Gonna bring a little line back like that and that fun. A little bit of a curve. And just light little strokes. If you need water, get water. If you need it for your body or you need it for your brush, get the water that you need, but don't drink your paint water. Just don't mix them. And just take that to where you're happy with it. And when you're happy, it's going to have a little stem that comes down and goes here. There we go. That's a nice little stem that goes there. There's a little bit of a fluff kind of coming off the surface over here. Its little seed pot is maybe not in our view. There we go. It's looking quite looking good. And then also there's some little seed pods, right? That they're gonna come here. Just make sure that they've all got little seed pods. Even the ones that we're not seeing, maybe off the screen. It's, it's funny, we have a lot of music fans out here in the community today. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to say that there happen to be some BTS and Blackpink fans out there. And so I'd say go over, what platform do they have those on? IGTV. IGTV, Instagram. No, no, it's actually Reels on Instagram. Reels. Reels. It's the Reels, it's our Reels. We got some back Blackpink and some, yeah. uh, and some BTS, some BTS over there. love yeah. over there. Yeah, you over there. check that out. We got some love. We have love. Love. Sorry, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm so, my daughter's always like, Mom, <laughs> stop. And I'm like, I can't. I love what I love. I love what I love, and I know what's good, and I know what's good for the world. Not really. I don't know what's good for other people. I'm not, I have not, like, lost my mind. Let's put a little one right here, right? Now, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and honestly do its stem right now. And the reason I'm doing its little stem down to the seed pod right now mm -hmm. is because I've got to go over everything with its little fluffs. This one is open towards us. And so we're going to see... Making sure there's like a dark little center in there. It'll just be visually important, you know, as you do. Uh, there's one, it's down here, but I think I'm actually going to move it to here because I think it'll just look better there. Mm -hmm. I do that sometimes where I'm like, nope, gonna go, you're going to go this little bit this other place. Similar, but not the same. Mm 
little phthalo blue, a little bit of our dark color, our black. Make it nice. It's always fun to kind of capture the curve. These are really engineered for flight. Everything about how these little seeds grow and are designed by necessity are engineered to catch currents of wind and travel far so that the daughter plants can find a new home and continue the line. And that's a wonderful thing. That's fantastic. Mm. Now you want to take this time and be like, okay, there's some stuff I can do. Like I want to clean up this stem, any stems you want to clean up, any stuff that you want to add to it, any like that. And we're going to rinse out, change water. Come back and add some droplets. Ooh. Now, we don't need to add as many as are on there. We just want some because it adds some drama. And you want drama on your canvas, not in your life. I think all of us can agree that we're drama to here and we need some peace. So, the drama is going to be droplets, which is actually really calming and healing and only on your canvas. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to take a picture of this. Oh, and then it's dry. the next step. You, oh, no, it's okay. We're okay. I'll just put the next step. Put on which, the next step. Shh. But, and we're going to talk about water droplets. So, water droplets, bubbles, um, they're all really the same thing. I have a video, uh, how to paint a water droplet in 10 steps, that basically just talks about the construction, the, the tones and values, like how is something a water droplet? It's real simplified, and if you want to watch that, it's just 10 minutes, I think. It's real short, um, and it'll just kind of cover that for you. But we're going to, of course, cover that here when we're doing that. I don't want to remove my chalk yet. I'm going to do that at the end when my painting is uh, well finished and completely done. Um, I'm excited to do water droplets. I love doing them. I love doing them so much. So you're going to love doing them too. And they're easier than you think. And they add a lot of boom yeah. to what you're doing. So I'm going to rinse out. And we're going to kind of find a couple of places to put some water droplets. I'm going to come in with some of my phthalo blue and let's put a water droplet right here and it's just a circle at first of phthalo blue now on the back side I'm going to be a little thicker with the blue line Let's put a couple here. We're making these bigger. And that is because they will add a little more drama if we do. And as we determined, we do want drama on our surface. Now this one might be a little bit smaller. There we go. Let's add these around, right? There could be one right here. At first, it's just all blue. Maybe we'll put one right here between these two. Who would want to do that, right? A little bit darker right here. And you can see already, just by just by making sure things are shaded the right way, you can already start to see the water droplet. That's a nice lot of water droplets. We'll start with that. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of look at each space where I have a droplet. Now maybe I come and get some purple right here. That's going to be my shadow. I'm going to add a little here and a little bit more back here. 
let's come here and do the same. This side I'll have a little bit more. Purple is a good shadow color. And I'm using my reference to know where the refraction is. Even though I'm making some changes, I can do that. I do want to keep some of the background showing through, though. That's super important. A little darker with that. Sorry, baby, that is on move. Okay. Because water droplets have these sort of see-through areas, right? They show what's behind them. But what I'm going to want to get, and I will give myself some fluid paint. Just treat myself to it. Treat yourself. And a little bit of a dot there. I often look at any of my lighting examples to be like, where would this be at? Where would this be? Right here, we're coming, notice I'm putting it against the dark and then we, you know, we can always give ourselves another little one. Getting some water droplets going. There we Little go. Dew drops. Little dew drops. Little dew drops are always a lot of fun. Sometimes I'll add little white dots. A little bit to kind of imply a little extra water. A couple of places. All right. So we've done this hyper like up close standing line and we've done water droplets. You learn how to paint something you can see through. Sometimes when you're really new to painting, you're like, how am I supposed to paint something see through? You can see through it. What am I painting? What you're always painting, whether it's pouring water or see through glass or uh, anything that's transparent is the light and shadow that can still be seen on the object. You don't paint what you see through. You paint only what you see. And when you kind of calm yourself down in that moment and go, I'm only going to paint what I can see. I don't worry about the part of the object I can't see. That's my brain having a moment with me. I'm just going to paint what I can see. Kind of like in life, right? You're going to do what you can see and have in front of you. You don't worry about all the stuff you can't see yet. All right. Let's take a picture. Yeah. Don't you think water drops should be their own step six? I think they should be their own step oh, no, six. Step oh. Now we're on step six. Butterflies, step six. Healing butterflies, sunrise. How are you guys doing today? Are you good? Breathing in, breathing out. Painting the most awesome painting of our lives. You can do this. Now remember, when you're new to painting, paintings have a lot of awkward stages. They are very much ugly ducklings, especially in acrylic. So you've really got to get to the end. You know how everyone says it always works out in the end? If it's not working out, it's not the end. That's it. So, yeah, this is where we're, ha we're like a little bit past halfway through. Um, but it's still like that part where you like maybe start to question yourself and your life choices and whatever made you think that you could take up painting in your house on your own. And you're like, why did I buy all this stuff? Did I buy the right stuff? Why am I doing this? I'm trying to relax and I don't feel relaxed. If that's you, come with me right here and go. I'm just coloring. This is. This is just coloring. And just it's color. okay. Coloring is serious business, but it is just coloring. <sighs> All right. So, Ar 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 Arlu Rassi mm -hmm. says, important lesson I learned from cinnamon. Hmm. Not having a particular paint or brush should never stop you from painting a project. No teacher no. online has ever said that to me. So I was like. Oh, yeah. Definitely. 
for all tutorials. Don't let it stop you. Do not let having their, that tool or that brush or any of that stuff. I, it's important that I tell you what I'm using, but it is not as, as critical. I can, I'm going to do, I, we were saying this other day, was it with patrons? I don't know. It was somewhere where I was saying, I'll just, I could just paint a cloud with any brush. Um, I'm going to probably do a video at some point where I just paint a cloud with every brush I have. Mm -hmm. It's, and I know that's crazy because I have a set of brushes called cloud brushes. Just, it's never the tool. The magic is in you. The magic, I know Kung Fu Panda said this, but the magic is in you. Post it first. I'm saying it now. Magic is in you. Okay. Let's paint a butterfly. Let's that's paint always fun. <laughs> Look at me. I'm like, that's always fun. We like the butterfly paint. We like butterflies. I like them so much. I'm going to take a little of my brown over to my yellow. Maybe I'll get a little orange into it. Let's start out. Blocking in the butterfly. Just getting him in. All right, we just see the structure of his body. We're going to lighten him up in a minute with some fluff. But we started with a little bit of burnt sienna. A little bit of burnt sienna. Yellow and red. Because they go together. And it needed to be said. And let's give, you know, he's going to have a little bit of, a little bit here, right? Because... <laughs> Robin He's got to have a place to poop. <laughs> what? Robin was 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 worried that the last floof didn't have a stem. Although I don't know that it uh, made a difference. It is. It's actually foreshortened where we yeah. don't see it. It's coming at us. So if panic. you're at all worried, just add a stem. Like I, I will that. do that for you for because sometimes you guys are like, I can't do it on my own. Let's just do it. If you're at all concerned, just stem it in. Just stem it in. Stem. There's a stem. It doesn't. <laughs> but you know, it's. Just but you know what? You don't have to be so uh, kidnapped by your reference photo that you don't do what your artist brand says to you. You need to do this mm -hmm. or everything will go wrong. Everyone is butterfly emojiing. Now, to that end, I am about to use one of my brushes. This is, I call this the cat's tongue. It's an art Sherpa brush. This one happens to have paint all over it, so that's funny. Um, well, not that funny. It's not like, ha, ha, ha. Just, I do, okay? You could also use a filbert. You could also use a round. You will be okay. But this is a number eight cat's tongue from the Art Triple Line of Brushes. I'm going to start blocking in Mr. Cutie Gorgeousness's wigs. Let's start out with just some phthalo blue, a little bit of ultramarine and phthalo blue, and start painting in his wings. I do this because blues can be a little transparent. Right? It can be. A little streaky, a little transparent. We have a few uh, layers to do. Just catching those little, those little scallops, those little feelings. Right. I was painting it in all blue. We just need a layer of blue. I'm just going in. I'm not even being so neat or tidy, am I? Mm. No, I'm not worried about it. Now we're going to come over the top of this with some purple and some other colors, but we're just getting some nice color on him. He's going to come in beautifully. I know some of the steps feel a little short, but it can be nice when we take a minute to do this stuff because then you don't get overwhelmed by all of the techniques and things you need to do to complete a painting. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I don't got to get overwhelmed by all the things that we got to put in each step of the painting when we write it up in the all mini book. The things. All right, so there's, there's the beginning of a wing. We've started. Things have started. Let's come down here and put in the beginning of wing. I'm going to like 
make sure there's a nice little scalping here. I want to take that away. Whenever you see me kind of paint things in roughly like this, it just means that I need this layer of paint to make all the other magic happen. Mm. That's why I do that. That's why I'm not worried or concerned in any particularly specific way. I'm going to come back with a bit of purple. And this is going to also help me um, make sure that my two wings, that where I've got both wings sort of foreshortened, uh, even though I have to paint them both blue, have a little difference from each other. It's an artist trick just to help our brains hold the visual space apart. we got to hold our visual space apart. Little scallops, scallop, scallop, scallop. <laughs> and because of the purple, you're not going to feel like this wing and that wing are the same way. It's all that's happening. Right. And here's that sort of forward facing bottom wing. Yay! So that's really what you've got to do in this step. You've got to get kind of this much little stuff going on here. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to get fresh water, dry this, dry it, and then do the next step. All right. <sighs> now, if you're drying your surface here, you can take the time to look in the link in the description down below, and you'll find that there's a bunch of resources that you'll need. All the paint, uh, a link to our website where you can get the traceable. You can find out more about uh, our calendar. If you go to our website, you have the calendar. You can see all the stuff that Cinnamon's got going on. You can... Uh, there's our patronage is out there. Thank you for everyone who's a member of our patronage. We really we appreciate that. Um, we couldn't do what we're doing without the support of viewers like you. And honestly, we mean that. So you can check out theartsherpa.com forward slash patron for more information. Oh, thank you for the shout out, babe. I always love it when you shout us out. And subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you don't mind, it will really help us out. But, uh, did you put up the step already? No. Okay. So he's going to put up the step. I was going to take a picture. Photograph it. You got to take a picture. Oh, did you take a picture and then the step? I don't know. You've done it. We timestamp it so not to worry. <laughs> So what we do is after, uh, this is a new thing. Um, and we started doing it at the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021 where we start chapter uh, time stamping the videos, writing little mini booklets that you can download and matching those things up. And what we're finding is you guys are able to rock out a much higher hoot if you're given enough of the resources. If you're waiting on the mini book, that's about a seven day wait on that right now. That's about our turnaround. Mm, yeah. That's about our turnaround. So what's this? what are we doing in this step? We're going to paint his little body because everything sort of layers over him. So mm. in this step, we're just going to paint his little body. That makes sense. I'm going to get fresh water. Do I have any fresh? I have two. I have enough. <laughs> I have enough. I have enough. I'm going to get back into my round. Round. Now, same color, which I still have a little bit of over here, but a lot more white this time. And we're going to make him a little fluffier. It's a little fluffy. Little fluffy. I find that a little fluff never hurt any bug because they're bugs and they need the fluff to be tolerable. I'm just making these little rough strokes, right? 
And it kind of implies a bit of bug fur. I also find that it's sort of nice. Back through with maybe like a little bit of the original color. We're just furring it up. Fur it up. Fur it up. Fur it up. And it looks a little bit furry. He's got some of the fur about him. Some of it. A bit. Let's uh let's think of a few legs. Crazy crazy bug legs. Ah, I, I need some crazy crazy bug legs. Fuck it up. We're gonna go. Forward leg. Welcome, Linda, to Emoji Club. Another little forward bug leg. They have little little bends and the little bug legs. They're fun. And then also he's got this little sort of <laughs> curly cue, which I do like. A little bit getting, of a bug eye. It's a big eye. Getting to see of, stuff. They love everyone's loving how how well up uh, are getting lots of comments on how lovely you look today. Oh well thank you so much. Beautiful little butterflies in your hair. That's very on theme. I took a little black and a little brown and we're gonna make a little fluffy stripe. We'll come back and add some more fluffy to the stripe, but right now we're just adding a little fluffy stripe. Black, little brown, little fluffy stripe. He says, birds, don't eat me. I'm stripey and you don't want to eat me. I might be poisonous. Stripe, 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 stripe. Confusing camouflage. Which is fun for artists who play with my confusing camouflage. See, we're striping. Mm -hmm. We're striping. I like to stripe. I'm going to take a little of my purple and my magenta. Fun, unexpected color. Or a butterfly. Sometimes you just got to have fun and unexpected colors. I'm going to get a little bit of my white paint. Okay, if there's a little yellow in it, but mostly it's just my white paint. That's another little layer. Let's put some love and time into him. Mm -hmm. Right? Because he's beautiful. I'm he is. beautiful, no matter what they say. What can bring you down? All right. So he's got some nice little thing there. Now I'm going to come back into my ultramarine blue. That was the blue on the left. Yeah. Come to the top of an eye. And I'm going to add a little ultramarine blue. Almost the highlight. It's not a blue eye. We're not making a blue eye. It's a reflection. So it should be... A pretty dark value, not that different from the background. Back to black. So I'm sure you have heard the black is the absence of color and white is all colors. That is true with light, but in no way true with pigment. <laughs> Black is a color, and when you're intermixing, uh, sometimes it's nice to treat it as a blue because it can make a green with yellow. It makes a brown with red. It does a lot, so respect your black. It's, it's your friend. It's going to do cool things in the painting for you. And come here and kind of pull a little leg back and like that there. and You know, you just got to give it like, oh, your 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 place is your 
Mm. There you go. I'm just a little bit of like, I got legs. Got legs. Knows how to use them. Trick. Touches of orange as well. The coral we mixed out earlier. I think it's always nice to put different colors that you used elsewhere in the painting. You know, now I'm going to take my white. I'm going to come along as a little thorax. That's my fluid white. See that? Mm -hmm. Made a little bit of that. And then we're going to come and we're going to add reflections. Those little bog buddy parts. These are broken little spots. Bugs often have like shiny spots on their armor that are highly reflective. See, just right over that blue. Kind of implying a multi-eye without doing a multi-eye. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Christine. For the cute little sticker. We love stickers. I used to be a sticker collector. I was big into stickers. Mm -hmm. I liked me some stickers. Stickers were amazing. I think that's all I have to say about his body. <laughs> he looks so nice on his body. Bum, bum, bum. <sighs> you got this. You can do this. So, again, breaking it down, seeing the steps makes it much more accessible. All right. We're going to photograph this. Photograph the body. So there's little details in objects, be it a water drop, be it a butterfly, uh, be it a glass. And those little details are what makes a difference where something really comes together and pops. I think one of the things that uh, helps you guys be so successful, because I see your work in the Facebook group, is that we really try to focus on those little details. And you guys are really great at capturing it. Now, if this is your very first painting, though, rule number one. No judging the painting. It's your first painting. Just the act of creativity is so courageous and so amazing and so fantastic that you've just got to give yourself a hug. And remember, it's not like we just ride a bike because we saw a bike, or surf because we surf, or fly a plane because we fly a plane. And thank goodness people don't think they can do that because everybody would get hurt. Art isn't dangerous, so everybody thinks they can just art like day one as if it's a masterpiece, but it takes a minute to develop these skills. And you've got to be kind enough to yourself to allow yourself to develop them. It takes about 10 paintings to get the base core kind of language and brush loads. Your tools might be a little different than mine. Your canvas might be a little different than mine. And that can create little weird moments in your painting experience. But don't give up. You've got this. Just keep going and you can get there. You All right. You can do it. You can do it. Let's paint butterfly wings. I like to paint butterfly wings. Because that's where we're at. That's where we're at. I'm going to take a little bit of my dots and maybe even head right in there. Kind of makes this really interesting purple. Add water to my brush just in case. Sometimes when you get cad into purple, it does some cool things. A lot of times people think cad red doesn't mix into dots purple. How did you get your chocolate in my peanut butter? Because <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to your peanut butter and spilled my chocolate. I don't know, it's not that complicated. <laughs> Sorry. Let's get back into with our Quinn Magenta, right? We got a little bit of that whole mix there, and then we grab some of our white into it. See that lovely color? Mm -hmm. And we're gonna come right in the center here Ooh. and start to add that highlight. Okay. 
Now this color is around the wing in several places. All right, internet, because you guys are amazing. Mm. Every time I see somebody be super foolish on Twitter, I love to see the brilliance of the internet respond because y'all are researchers. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're doing with your free time. If somebody will say something crazy, then you're going to come back and you'll be like, I've seen this account six times. <laughs> this photo's, there. and actually I do it too. If I do a reverse Google image search, I will like sometimes like see that same photo on so many accounts. But you guys are like amazing. You're just, you, you just blow my mind. So, so internet, since you're such geniuses and you really truly are, what kind of butterfly is this? Ooh. Because I don't even know. It is the Antarctican quinacridone tiny butterfly. <laughs> because clearly... I don't think I've ever seen a butterfly that's so tiny that it could sit on <laughs> the leaf. I mean, on the seed of a dandelion. That's like tiny. That's like eeny, don't eeny, don't eeny, science eeny. my art, sir. He's, he's, don't science my Photoshop. Think, don't you science my Photoshop? No, this is a prehistoric photo, <laughs> and this is when they had gigantic dandelions that roamed the <laughs> The southern <laughs> Sorry, I'm okay. <laughs> That's right. We're okay. Everything's okay. <sighs> Sometimes it doesn't fit. They say it's a blue morpho. Is it? What mm. is the actual size of a blue morpho? <laughs> Probably bigger than this. You think? <laughs> I'm thinking. Yeah, that maybe. It might. I, I'm guessing, you know. Scale. Oh, I'm just going to wiggle some of this purple here. It's just the start of it, so. Wiggle it in. Wiggle it just a little bit. Why do I do that? I don't know. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I'm no good at it, and everybody knows it. All right, that's looking pretty good. Just a little thought there. Now I'm going to get a lot more white into it. You see me just doing light little strokes, right? Mm. These That's are little pretty bits. cool. So, it's a blue morpho. Blue morpho. Like. Long as it's not, uh, what was it, orco. It's just, I just can't go back to that. Let's make some iridescent butterfly wings as mm. we keep going. All right, so I'm going to get some water. I'm going to load up some of my phthalo blue. If you want to, you can even get a little of your cad yellow into this, a small amount. The blue butterfly in the subfamily Polymatina. Ooh, some knowledge laid on. Her. I mean, the, just, just, I don't even know why anybody ever tries to be foolish because, like, with an <laughs> average wingspan of 12 centimeters. <sighs> Making that a three foot dandelion. <laughs> so, really, I go on Twitter for my community. I go on there for you guys. And uh, also, um, this uh, young man that has bald cats. He's a bunch of bald cats, and he dresses up like his cats, in, or the cats dress up like him. I'm not really sure. And they take like, pictures and themes. And for some reason, when I see this, the hate and the suck and the terrible world just falls away and i'm just like this cats are so bomb and i'm so happy <laughs> <laughs> so that's the other reason and i i think i shared uh one of his posts of a cat sitting all over him and they were wearing knit things mm -hmm. um today knit things the sphinx cat yes it's bald it's so bald <laughs> That just seems like that <gasps> that breed of cat got karma for all the other cats, yeah, like, and it knows it. It like walks around going, you know, you caused this, you other cats. <laughs> you did it. You did this to me. 
with your dander. Somewhere out there, you made a human allergic, and I am the result of that. And now I'm cold and have to wear this sweater. <laughs> and this man is wearing me off his head. But he is, he's like, and you know, here's the thing. I really like it when somebody owns a pet, but it seems like they would own a different pet. <laughs> right? Like, like you're like, I, like it's awesome when people look like their pets, but it's even better when their pet does. He yeah, just does like, not seem like you meet somebody. Like you should have a husky or like an a horse or a bear or something. But no, you've got this little pomeranian. You're walking yeah, around with underneath like, your like, arm. Like I love like a very small woman and a giant dog. Um, well, they're like maybe the same height. Like they're just like maybe the same, and his or like a really tough looking dude in a teeny tiny yeah. sweet little puppy. Ozzy hmm? and his pomeranians. What? Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne and his Ozzy Osbourne has pomeranians. Yeah, all those little, little barking pomeranians. <laughs> <laughs> I just totally forgot that. I just remember him coloring. <laughs> I just thought at least they let Ozzy color. Look, he's coloring again now, mumbling through the house. I don't know what he's saying. I don't understand anything he's saying. Ooh. Like. Sharon Osborne is the only one that speaks Ozzy Osborne. Dr. Evil and Do- and Mr. Bigglesworth. <laughs> I'm going to keep loading. <laughs> Sorry, I'm okay. I'm going to load some more blue and I'm going to blend it kind of into this little turquoise that we've got here. You can kind of see that we do that. So this is just more uh, of the pure phthalo blue, uh, blending into that mix of phthalo, a little bit of cad yellow and titanium white and i'm just stroking in this is the number eight cat's tongue but you could remember we said earlier you could use other brushes you would not have to use just this brush that's not required mm. it's not a, that's not a part you don't have to do that i may add some purple back here as i'm pulling this blue i think i might but just a little bit go shoot, 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 shoot. Shoot. just Mm, 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 mm. And I put a little yellow in my fellow blue because when I had white, it would turn turquoise, and that's very good for all of us on this day. Mm. That blue just. It's striking. It is. It's pretty blue. Say my name. Say my blue. All right. I'm going to come in. And I'm going to add a little more white into this. All right. I'm going to add a little more white. And we're going to very lightly just kind of pull the brush over. And we let a lot of what's underneath show through. That's what we do. I'm going to pull this here and then, you know, definitely. And if I need to fix some of this, I will, but I want to pull this in and. Get a little more yellow on it. And a little more white. Couple places. Let us go. Kiss, 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 kiss. Mm-hmm. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Okay. Now, to do the next part, this really needs to be dry, so we'll call it a step. Are you? Yeah. Right. And then we're gonna come back and just finish the thing because we're cl- that close to being done. We're almost done with the painting today. Aren't you glad I don't have a singing show? I know I get so many, like, I know I get down thumbs because, I don't know, people just don't like me, but I also know I get down thumbs because I sing badly, and that's okay. <laughs> I do. Look, here's the thing. I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing at the campfire. I'm not going to remember the lyrics. I'm probably going to sing it wrong, but I'm going to have a good time, and I'm going to make the music people feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. It's happening. 
I clearly am one of those people that had to learn how to deal with all of this very early. Because, <laughs> like, the other kids looked at me and they are like, this is a little different than the rest of us. <laughs> and I was uh, like, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Thank you, Innova. Thank nice you, Innova. Nice little sticker. Should we bubble? We haven't bubbled we in a minute. We should Let's bubble for... Bubble. All of the bubbles we've missed. For all the bubbles we've missed today. For these bubbles are for you. All of you who Shh. have bubbled Shh. for all the bubbles that have been before and been <sighs> now, we will get meta on our bubbles and just mm -mm, be mm -mm, in mm -mm. the bubble. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Bubble, bubble. <sighs> that was really bubble. good. That is really good. All right. All right. So it's another good time to get clean water if you have any. Do I have any? I do have one left. <laughs> Did you? Just one. Just one. Just one. Now we're going to come back into the pink and purple mm -hmm. right, that we've got. A little more pink, though. And I'm going to add some more white to my palette. Now, this thing that I'm using was real cool is I can... Sorry. I get to wash this palette paper when I'm Oh, what done. is that thing? Tell us about that thing. This is the Stay Wet palette. Uh, I'm Hopefully my mods have a link for it. Um, I've been testing it, and I do actually like it. And here's what's crazy. I only put out fresh paper today because I had been using, like, the one sheet for, like, a week and a half, and it was oh. very stained. And I just thought I'm going to treat myself because I, I purchased these sheets like it was peel paper palette. So I have a bazillion of them. I think I have a lifetime supply now. Mm. <laughs> I do. I think I do. I'm going to get a nice light color. I'm going to come here. And I'm going to do a similar thing I did before, which is to kind of pull this over. There we go. And then we're going to go a little bit of pink there. There's just a kiss of it. Maybe a little more purple, actually, I think, into this part of it. Just a little. Rinse out thoroughly. I'm in a weirdly good mood now that I've been painting. That's I was good. not, guys. I was not in a good mood this morning. Yeah. This is how you know artwork is powerful. I was not in a good mood. I was real stressed. Um, stuff was getting to me. Stuff was really getting to me. Mm. And I knew that if I could just get to the painting, I would be okay. Oh, this one turned out really good. It's super fun to do. I'm just dry brushing in. Dry brushing means I don't have a lot of water on my brush. That's all I mean. Not a lot of water on my brush. Now, I'm going to let all that kind of in there dry. And so while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to put the black on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get my brush and load up with some black paint. Remember, we do that flip load, and that is very helpful to us. Use me. And it's okay sometimes to get a little brown into it, like come here and be like soften it a bit. That's all right. It's okay. You have to add water to it. You can. Mm. Getting a little. Get a little bit of the lines going, Wait. right? Wing parts in there. Everyone agrees how powerful that art is. And they, you know, a lot of folks are saying that they uh, have that transformative journey with you. They come in and they really, you know, take that journey from being kind of upset to being centered and happy. A lot of folks are saying that you've uh, helped them through a lot of places like that this year. I am so glad. And you guys help me because I might forget to paint. 
Like if I, if it wasn't like, oh man, I've got a live scheduled. I better get myself together and show up and today. <laughs> I might not take the time for self care. So I think there is some symbiosis happening here. There's some interdependability. You guys help me be a better person every day and understand, you know, different experiences and what's going on all over the world. You know, we are watched in 250 countries. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the coolest things ever. You too. Free artwork all around the world. I can say that is probably one of the coolest check marks I've been able to put in my little list. So thank you for letting me be a part of that. Come along here. We're going to take this on the little edge, right? We're going to put this on the little edge. Press down a little bit harder. Kind of a little thicker there at the front of that wing. Getting there. Ah, oh, this one. The trailing wing. Perspective wing. Hi, I'm a wing in perspective. Mm -hmm. I am here to freak out new artists. <laughs> That is my whole purpose. Could have just had one wing, but no, it's like the second eye. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes the second eye. If you ever want to know how to do the second eye, if that has been your thing, I have that. Look for the uh, rainbow crying eyes that I have. Um, and I do a whole explanation on how you can freehand the second eye very accurately. Uh, I mean, like, Saruman just threw, it's like, nah, one's enough. <laughs> Saruman was not up for doing the second eye either. Nah, this one's good. <laughs> one ring to rule them all, but I can't do that second eye. That's not happening. <laughs> I just need one eye to peer from the top of this tower. <laughs> and take a little bit of this uh, coral that we made earlier, which we used a little of our quin and a little of our cad red and our yellow. And we get some more yellow into it. And make just a really happy color. Get some white. I think it even needs to be lighter and maybe some more yellow. Always fun to see. You just play with it. You're like, where does it need to go? It will tell you. We'll say, no, too yellow. <laughs> see? It told me. It said right away. It said no. Get some more white in it. You can do this. I do want more pink into the color. So what I'm playing with is the value, and I'm just kind of making these little irregular. See how these are like little, mm -hmm. irregular little wiggly strokes. The very technical term of that is the wiggly stroke. Ooh. You got to respect the wiggly stroke. Interestingly enough, we'll put a little bit of this color right here. And as we come back, we'll get into that more. You can always pull more over here and be like, oh, no. And then maybe this one has a little of that. Capturing the detail. The blue butterfly. It's not so blue, is he? Well, I mean, he is blue, but there's a lot more than the blue. <laughs> there's a lot more than just blue, though. That's I don't point. know. I don't see why they call him a blue butterfly. I just don't get it. <laughs> Stop it. I'm teaching a class here, sir. We have important biz. Important biz that we have to do. And that and if and if we don't do it, what happens? Do you know what happens? The butterfly is red? No. Okay, what? Nobody gets a good painting. Oh, well, that's true. I'm going to take a little bit of white. Couple of places. Not everywhere, guys. Just some. Oh, that, that's the shimmer. Little shimmer. Shimmer, 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 shimmer. The new live action of Winx is coming out. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, you know about wings. Yes, I do. I've been waiting. It's marked. All right. Now I'm going to step back from this little fellow. They're going to do a new season of wings? Winks. Oh. Live action. See, I was going to get excited. That was a pretty good show from like the mid 90s. Who would have thought that an airport terminal would be so entertaining? <laughs> I mean, really? 
<laughs> and I watched it. Uh. I watched it. Oh, 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 oh. I'm putting out a little fluid because for Zazz, I'm going to add. Because I promise you, if he had like a sunrise coming behind him, these wings would have some glitter, glitterific moments. They would, just a little bit. We're just adding a little bit of, wow! Mm. You don't want to forget the wow. That's so good. And then I'm going to come to, I guess, right here. Ooh, you're all, you're getting, you're all ready to do some signing over there. Quick, quick, quick. Wow. Now, I will let this completely cure and dry, and then I will take a very soft, lightly damp brush and lift up my chalk lines. Hmm. That makes sense. And that's how you paint this gorgeous butterfly. Do you love it? Do you love it? Do you love it? You want to take a tour around it, John? Tour around it for tour, a second. Tour, tour will, the I butterfly. Will, I will go over here and we'll take a quick look at that butterfly because that butterfly turned out really cool. Let's travel around the canvas. Travel Sand the canvas. Number. Now, some folks were earlier asking about the, uh, the drops. So I'll go over here and I'll take a close-up look at that drop in just a second. But let everyone look at that butterfly. And again, you got to catch that video 10 and steps then, for a realistic water drop. It'll give you some idea of how those are constructed. You can see some of those water drops over there. They're really just sort of blue circles with white highlights. Some donutty things. They are. They are because you got to see what's through there. They do refraction, you know, and they pick up the world around them. And there you go. We've got them. And oh, it's so gorgeous. <laughs> I'm excited even about this last picture. There we go. Oh, man, that was good. And we all needed that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Tuesday night? Tuesday. I hope you guys will be back because at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to paint. Um, I don't remember what we're going to paint. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Monster trucks. It's going to we'll be something right awesome. I, what it is is that I've scheduled uh, lessons until March, and then I'm also painting Every single day getting ready for Acrylic April. If you don't know, Acrylic April is a 30-day art challenge that I do to help people, like, really, like, break through any art blocks that they have and really, like, boom, boom, in 30 days turn them into functioning artists. <laughs> so uh, it's a lot to prep for. It uh, started in December, and I'm still going. I just paint every day, every day, every day, every day. So it all becomes a, a mishmash. Yeah. Do you know what we're painting on Tuesday? I don't, but I'll, Somebody well, look it up and tell them. You were right. using fluid white to sign that, right? I was. That, right? So... This is Golden's Titanium Fluid White. It's a very cool product. You could also use craft paint. It's also acceptable. I like this one. Here's, why don't I use craft paint, you say? Because you like deco. I do like deco. Why don't you use craft paint? Because this has about a bazillion tactical term times more white pigment in it, which means that it's not transparent and it comes out thick and opaque okay. and it just flows and... I this just love it. Coming Tuesday. So I look on so I went out to the artsherpa.com forward slash calendar. Good job. We have a calendar and so you can there. see what we're doing for the next three months. That's now, how I find says, out what I'm doing every day. It says that the seventeenth there's a pure patron painting. Then the eighteenth, which is Monday, there's a butterfly power patron painting. <laughs> patron patron. Then on Tuesday, Tuesday you there's guys. A candles. <gasps> we're doing the purple candles the purple with candle. the orchids. That's gonna be a table lesson. So that's an overhead camera on an eight byte canvas. Uh, and then, so if you're doing acrylic April, if you've done acrylic April, it'll be like, it'll go with all your other stuff. It's a gorgeous purple, serene, zen, healing, uplifting, ready for 2021. Cause I don't care how this year started out. I don't care. It is gonna finish nice. That is what it's gonna do. I will it into existence. I will it. I didn't really work 2020, but it's gonna work this year. And I'm gonna just paint really, really happy beautiful things the whole way through until it gets in line do you like that plan i do that's my plan it's my deep and profound plan mm. 
Thank you. And this is your very first painting. Congratulations. You finished it. So throw up in the chat. This was your first painting. Everyone clap, 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 clap for you. Remember, it is important to take care of yourself. It's important to take care of how you feel physically and emotionally. Both those things matter, especially when the world decides to be stressful, uh, pooty tootie. And um, and so you really need to be resilient. So make time for yourself. Make time for creativity. Make time for rest. Make time for reflection and taking care of yourself in some way that is restorative. Be good to yourself because you can't give to others until you do that. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye.